All right, we are on the June 2012 exam. This is page 14, questions 76 through 80. Question 76, and they all deal with this uh, picture we've got here, which is a light ray of uh, this frequency. The reason to keep telling you this frequency is because the index of refraction is calculated based on that particular frequency of light. It changes, and that causes dispersion and uh, rainbows in a prism. Different colors of light have different indexes of refraction, so they have to give you what particular color. So anyway, uh, it's refracted, travels from water into flint glass. So this little arrow down here indicates that it's going uh, from water into flint glass. The path of light ray in the flint glass is shown in the diagram below. Well, water and flint glass, let me tell you what I'm going to do first. I'm going to look up the index of refraction. And on my formula sheet, I have the absolute index of refraction. And for water, the absolute index of refraction is, in fact, 1.33. And going into flint glass, glass flint, 1.66. So it's going into a higher index of refraction, so this angle is going to be a little bit less. So I'm just going to sketch this real quick, just to kind of help me. And uh, this should be a little bit larger angle. I may have exaggerated, but it's coming from water into flint glass, so it's going to slow down a little bit, so this angle is going to be a little bit smaller. So now i got a rough idea of what's going on here. Yeah, slightly smaller. All right, let's see what they want. Question 76. Using a protractor, measure the angle of refraction of the light ray in the flint glass. All right. If I was going to do the calculation, this would be the first thing I would want to know. And I, uh, I've got my normal, and so I put that on my zero line. My vertice goes right there where it hits. And let's see, I'm measuring 10, 20, 30. There's 35, 36, let's say 37 degrees. That looks like 37 degrees to me. So I'm measuring 37 degrees. So using a protractor, measure the angle of refraction of the light ray in the flint glass. Okay. So uh, 36 or 76 would be, um, let me say that was, 37 degrees. And the unit degree is already there for you. All right. Now what they want you to do is to calculate the angle of incidence. Okay, that's good. We got everything we need. We know uh, N1 is the water, 1.33. Theta1 is what we're looking for, the angle of incidence. We know uh, N2 is 1.66. And the Theta2 is... Uh, 37 degrees. Now, if you make a mistake on this, your teacher will have to then measure the angle or recalculate everything using yours. And if you, you know, if you came up with 40 degrees, then they would have to go calculate the new answer based on 40 degrees. You'd lose the point for measuring wrong, but you would get it if you used it properly. So I'm just going to check again. Uh, five, six, seven, 37 degrees. Okay, uh, calculate the angle of incidence. So I know the index of refraction, the angle of incidence is what I'm looking for. So let's see if we can't find a formula in the wave section. And waves, uh, here we go. There's the waves, and it says that N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. I'm going to write down my equation. N1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. I'm looking for theta 1. So the first thing I do is get rid of n1. And I do that by dividing both sides of the equation by n1. Now I'm going to get rid of sine, and the way I do that is by taking the inverse sine of both sides. And now I've got an equation that says theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2 divided by n1 and take the inverse sine of it. So now I plug in 1.66 times the sine of 37 degrees. 
divide that by 1.33, and then hit the inverse sine button. Well, let's see what my calculator tells me. Let's see. Oh, I need new batteries. Uh, let's say I always like doing the sign first. So uh, 37 degrees, and you hit the sign. Nope, see, that's the thing. I, I, different calculators have a different thing. I want the sign of 37. So it's so an order of operation. wants to see the number first, 0. 0.6. Multiply that by 1.66. Divide that by 1.33. And take the inverse sine of it. So it's inverse sine of the answer I just got. And I got 48.68, let's call it 48.7 degrees. And 1 sine theta 1 and 2 sine theta 2. All right, let's see, calculate the angle of incidence from the light ray, show all your work. Okay, and so I got 48.1. I listed my knowns with uh, units. Degree, I guess, is the only unit there. I plugged in with the units. And then I got my answer with units. Okay. 49. Using a protractor and a straight edge on the diagram in your answer booklet, draw the path of the incident light ray in the water. Okay, so here's where uh, it's a real pain to grade these things. Let me tell you, because what your teacher has to do is, no matter what the answer is you got for this, you get, you know, 100 degrees, if you then draw it properly, you get the point for 79. You miss it here because you screwed up your math or whatever, but if you can draw that angle, then you get one more point. So uh, let's show you how to draw an angle at all. So here's uh, the normal. We put the zero line on our normal zero line, here's zero. There's 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, what are we getting up to? 48, almost 49. So here's 49, here's 48. So we're kind of right in here. Check to make our vertices right there. And uh, so here's the ray of light going in. And when your teacher goes to grade that, they're going to throw a protractor on that. And if you've got it, that ang the angle that you've uh, calculated, if you've drawn that angle, probably plus or minus a degree, um, you'll get that point. That's 79. Okay, now let's see what they want. Question 80. Identify one physical event other than transmission or refraction that occurs as light interacts with the water flint glass boundary. Well, uh, the one that I always teach, because we play a lot with lasers in my class, so whenever light's doing anything, you always get a beam that's reflected. There's always some light reflected. And, um, and you know, this is going to be, what did we say it was, about 48 degrees, 49 degrees? This is going to be 49 degrees. So, in fact, reflection at the incident angle always occurs whenever light goes from one boundary to the next. And so if you've got a lot of lenses, you will lose light, because every time you go from one lens to the next, you reflect some. So let's go ahead and, uh, and write that. You identify, for one point, well, um, I'm going to write reflection. I'm writing a complete sentence because I started with a capital, I ended with a period. Uh, transmission or refraction. Um, I guess some would also be absorbed. Some of the energy will be absorbed as it goes from one barrier to the other. Uh, the molecules interact. This actually will get a little bit warmer and, and uh, you'll lose a little bit of your energy. Um, but reflection is the big one. Reflection is really popular. So uh, I don't. I haven't looked at the answer key. I don't know what they want, but I'm going with reflection, and and I'm assuming that's going to be giving me a point. That's all I wanted. Well, uh, that was page fourteen.